properly. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Can okay. you, can you, uh, Manny, can you uh, uh, get up your volume a little bit though? On your, 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 on your microphone? I'm not sure. Let me see if I can do that. Apologize, I'm not sure. If... Just want to make sure uh, Brother Mitchell is being recorded, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll just make sure to speak up. Is that a little bit better? Yes, thank you very much. Sure, of course, no problem, my pleasure. Um, uh, again, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here uh, presenting this information here for everyone. Uh, this is, um, we're going to be talking about the PPP, the Payroll Protection Program. Uh, we're also going to touch on a few of the other programs, the IDLE, the um, Targeted IDLE Advance, and then the uh, SVOB. Um, we'll kind of touch on them. I do apologize. Some of the slides are a little bit busy, as I was uh, mentioning to Mr. Mitchell earlier. So I'm not going to read every slide to you because um, you guys can all pretty much read, but I'm going to touch on the basic, uh, the, the, the most important pertinent information. Um, and with that, we'll kind of get started. So um, as you're aware, obviously the Economic Aid Act came out, as uh, Brother Mitchell mentioned, that uh, the president did sign on by law this act on December 27th of last year. Uh, it appropriated approximately 2.3 billion trillion, I'm sorry, spending combining 900 billion in the pandemic aid relief. Um, so a lot of stimulus uh, funding here to kind of help with the pandemic. It all revolves around uh, this Consolidated Appropriations Act uh, and the CARES Act in conjunction with the pandemic related legislation. So uh, this was pretty much included for economic aid to all hard hit small businesses, nonprofits, uh, venues act. This is specifically the Economic Aid Act. And then the Coronavirus uh, Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2021. So we'll, we'll just kind of touch base on these. So the, the Paycheck Protection Program Loan Overview, it's back, right? And it's kind of third reiteration. Um, this is kind of a little bit of a summary of what it was. Uh, so the loans are forgivable if all employee retention criteria are met, funds are used for eligible expenses. The interest rate on these is about approximately 1%. And the, the loans uh, should have been used by June 5th with a maturity of five years. Now, some loan uh, payments deferred for borrowers who apply for loan forgiveness until SBA remits the borrower's loan forgiveness amount to the lender. And if the borrower doesn't apply for loan forgiveness, uh, payments are deferred for 10 months after the end of the covered period for the borrower's loan forgiveness. So depending on what your covered period is. Um, the biggest thing that I'll kind of say with this in relation to this is your, your biggest support is going to be the lenders. Uh, there are some general criteria, obviously, with, for the PPP program. However, each lender will still have slightly uh, different um, either rules or just uh, application process. So really, it's going to all depend on the uh, particular lender that you partner with. Uh, and we'll kind of touch base and go over that a little bit as well. So now we have this concept of first draw and second draw. Right, so what, what is this first straw loan eligibility? So for eligible applicants that did not receive a PPP loan prior to August 9th of last year, um, if you didn't receive one and you're a sole proprietor, independent contractor, self-employed, uh, any small business that, uh, that meets the SBA stand, size standards um, or de depending on your industry. So this includes any business 501C3, C3, uh, 19 veteran organizations or travel business concerns. So section B2C for small business act um, for employees that were greater. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, organizations, businesses that were greater 500 or more employees. And any business that uh, the NAICS code that begins with 72 uh, accommodations has more than one physical location, uh, less than 500 per location. So th again, this is kind of um, what it would mean to have a first draw. So if you did not take a previous PPP loan, you would be looking to make your first draw. And this was, uh, there's a couple reasons for this one as well too. So some of the um, eligibility entities, so uh, as I mentioned, they must comply with the size standards uh, as noted by the SBA. The newly eligible um, organizations are housing cooperatives, 
destination marketing organizations, and certain 501c6 organizations, such as Chambers of Commerce. Um, there's additional eligibility criteria within the SBA.gov uh, website. Also, uh, business entities um, that are still eligible are the same ones that were eligible in the previous one. So all the new ones plus what we offered, uh, what, what the SBA offered previously with the uh, sole proprietors, 501c3, 19s, and travel businesses. So what if you did take a loan previously, a PPP loan? Then you were talking about this PPP second draw loans. So second draw loans are new loans uh, with loan details and terms um, the same as the first draw. However, for most borrowers, the maximum loan amount for the second draw now is going to be 2.5 average monthly 2019 or 2020 payroll costs. And the maximum loan amount right now is $2 million for a second draw. $2 million for a maximum of a second draw. Now, second draw loans um, must submit uh, the information to the SBA with an SBA form when applying to their lender. There is a slight stipulation for um, food service sector. So any accommodation for um, businesses that fall under the NAICS code 72, the maximum loan amount for the second draw loan there is three and a half times the average monthly uh, 2019 or 2020 payroll costs. Uh, again, the maximum still is $2 million. However, you're eligible, your, your um, average monthly can, is, is higher. So you can be eligible for more. The maximum is still 2 million, but just compared to a, a regular business. Now, uh, second draw loan eligibility criteria as well. Um, you must have previously received the first draw PP loan or had a previous PP loan uh, and will or have used the full amount only for the authorized uses. So you would have to have, if you did take a previous PPP loan, you would have had to have already completed use all the funds or will be using them, but obviously only for the eligible criteria that they're meant for. Second draw loans um, are targeted for smaller businesses. Uh, those hit hardest. So they have a 300 employer or less uh, eligibility criteria. So larger businesses that have more than 300 employees cannot apply. And of course, the business would have had to have suffered a, suffered a 25% reduction in gross receipts. Now, what about this loan um, is forgivable? Uh, so forgiveness conditions, uh, loans made to eligible borrowers qualify for full loan forgiveness if within the eight to 24 week covered period following the loan distribution when they receive it, when you first get it. Uh, so for first draw loans, employee and compensation levels are maintained. You have to keep them level. The loan proceeds are spent on payroll costs and other eligible expenses. And at least 60% of the proceeds are all spent on payroll costs. There really wasn't much change there, either between the first or the second draw. So you, as you remember, if, if you did take or apply for it previously, you had to spend at least 60% of that loan on payroll costs to have it considered forgivable. Now, so the procedure for that obviously is a uh, borrower can apply for forgiveness once all loan proceeds for which the borrower is requesting forgiveness has been used. You have to use it first before you can obviously uh, apply for forgiveness. Uh, borrowers can apply for forgiveness anytime up to the maturity date of the loan. So there's no, uh, just before, the only deadline there is before the maturity date of the loan when it's due. And if borrowers do not apply for forgiveness within 10 months after the last day of the covered period, then the PPP uh, loan payments are no longer deferred and the borrower will begin making loan payments to their PPP lender. Now, borrowers should contact their, their uh, lender and complete the correct form for loan forgiveness if they are looking to have the loan forgiven. Borrowers must apply for forgiveness through their lender and lenders submit the borrower forgiveness decision to the SBA. So you as a borrower, you would apply to your lender they will submit the information to the SBA for the forgiveness of the loan. And I would see some of the information for an information that you would need. Now the key provisions and changes, uh, borrowers can now set their PPP loans covered period to be any length between eight and 24 weeks to best meet their business needs. 
Loans cover additional expenses, including operation expenditures, uh, property damages, supplier costs, and worker protection expenditures. So those are new. So I'll just repeat those real quick. So loans cover additional expenses, including operation expenditures, property damages costs, supplier costs, and worker protection expenditures. There's a list more on the website as well. And those can also be, be uh, kind of covered with your lender. If the borrower has not already submitted for loan forgiveness, they may uh, go back and include newly eligible expenses. So obviously with these new eligibility or some of the new um, eligible expenses, you can resubmit those. You just have to connect with your lender. Eligibility uh, expense to include other types of organizations such as 501 C6s, housing and destination marketing organizations with no more than 300 employees and limited lobbying activities. So there's a greater flexibility for seasonal employees, employers, I'm sorry, uh, as long as they were in operation any 12 week period between February 15th of 2019 and February 15th of 2020. And that's for seasonal employees. Certain existing PPP borrowers can request to modify their first shawl loan and request an increase to the original PPP loan amount as well. Again, something that you need to do through your lender. So if you did take a loan and you have one and you wanted to kind of request an increase to the original amount, you can do that, but you have to do that through your lender. Now, the, some additional uh, things that we're gonna touch on. Uh, the IDO advances will no longer be deducted from loan forgiveness payments. Forgiven PPP loans are not taxable income, so they will not be considered taxable income. And expenses paid with PPP loan funds are now tax deductible. So borrowers should consult with the IRS for details regarding tax implications. And the expandable forgivable expenses are permissible for any PPP loan not already forgiven. All new borrowers, including farmers and ranchers, can use 2019 or 2020 as the base period for purposes of calculating their maximum loan amount. And I'm sorry, I should have updated, we should have updated this slide coming. Uh, this is already in effect, simplified forgiveness application for PPP loans under 150,000. So for loans under 150,000 borrowers uh, do not have to submit documentation until the time of forgiveness. Now, accessing capital for underserved populations, uh, one of the biggest Manny, things with, sorry. There's a, a suggestion uh, here in the chat box in case if you uh, want to. Can you please repeat the previous note? That's what uh, is uh, being requested by one of the... Uh, I'm not sure exactly where, so if it was, it was back on this slide. Go back so, one um, more, go back one more. One more page? Yes, please. Hold on, and I didn't see the chat, so. Don't, don't worry. I mean, it, it just to give people, I guess, the opportunity to make, uh, read it a little bit more. Um, I think, I think that should be sufficient. Uh, okay, yeah, and I'll reiterate, obviously, that all this information is on the website. Um, obviously, it's just a little cleaner formulated here, but actually, because it's, so long, it can look a little tedious to read. So that's why I'm trying not to. But thank you. Definitely, definitely understand. I'll leave this page up for for a sec too. But yes, um, the, the, if you go to uh, www.sba.gov um, and click on coronavirus um, relief, there is a ton of information, both on all, pretty much on all of the programs, obviously, and they do offer it in different languages as well. I forgot when I checked last. I think that there was more than ten different languages. Uh, that it was uh, provided on. So that's also something that's actually a really good benefit to be able to have it and read it in the different languages. Okay, so with accessing capital for underserved populations, um, Congress really intended this round of PPP to increase access to pandemic relief funding for the hardest hit small businesses, those uh, low income and underserved communities and underrepresented populations. Therefore, the SBA released guidance regarding actions to meet these objectives on the 6th of January by initially opening PPP loan application submissions strictly from community financial institutions, 
So they were very much local in these um, different underserved communities. Also leveraging its lender match platform for borrowers to find CFIs and other participating PPP lenders. And also by ensuring that the SBA continued to provide trainings, material and assistance via the SBA field office um, and the resource partners across the country. Whereas we at the state are also trying to support them as best we can. So we've kind of reached out and partnered, got the information, put this together and trying to get this information out to as many folks as possible. So some of the key dates have already come and passed, obviously, pretty much all of them, right? Uh, it opened up uh, on January 11th for first draw PPP loan applications from CFIs. Second draw opened up on the 13th. Then on the 15th, it opened up to institutions lending with more than one, bi or one billion or less in assets. And then it's been completely open since the 19th on uh, last Tuesday to all participating lending institutions. Now the deadline for PPP to apply is March 31st. And if most folks remember from last time, these are not unlimited funds. So definitely you wanna make sure you apply sooner. I encourage folks to reach out and connect with the lender sooner than later, because if you wait too long, they will eventually run out of funds. So another uh, point was to promote access to capital for minority underserved veteran women owned small businesses. Um, that's why the CFIs were initially offered um, right off the break for PPP loans. Some of the additional steps. Um, and like I said, this is gonna be the number one is to contact their lender or a finding a new lender if you have not applied before. Um, they offer that through the website, uh, www.sba.gov forward slash lender match. You can also visit um, www.sba.gov forward slash PPP for the most up-to-date documents. And if you wanted to try to find the local SBA district office as well, they are available. You could uh, search it through the sba.gov forward slash local hyphen assistance link. Now that's it for PPP. The next uh, bit of information I have is for the idle, the economic injury disaster loans. This was also offered in conjunction um, at the same time last year uh, with PPP. As we mentioned, PPP was very much targeted for payroll assistance um, and, and the, that portion was forgivable uh, because you were using it to pay your employees. The idle is not. The idle is something that's actually offered pretty much all of the time, all of the time through the SBA. Um, it truly is an economic injury disaster loan and that can happen from all types of different disasters, whether they be natural or in this case, obviously something as uh, under the lines of a pandemic. Now, this is also to kind of help meet the financial obligations of your operating expenses that could not have been met um, if the disaster did not occur and can't necessarily be covered by the PPP. So terms include uh, fixed interest rates at 3.75 for businesses and 2.75 for nonprofits. Uh, this loan term is for 30 years with no prepayment penalty or fees. Idle loans can be used for working capital and normal operating expenses. And unlike the PPP, collateral is required for loans over 25,000. Uh, the SBA does use general security agreements, so designating business, business assets as collateral, for example, if you have machinery, equipment, furniture, fixtures, some of that can be used for uh, collateral. And as I mentioned, uh, unlike the PPP, idle loans are not forgivable. This is a straight loan that would need to be repaid. Payments are deferred for one year, but interest still accrues. So once you, the distribu distribution is made, your payments are deferred for at least a year, but interest does occur, does accrue. So borrowers can make payments during this period if they choose to do so. Idle applications are also accepted on a rolling basis and open from all qualified small businesses, including agricultural businesses and private nonprofits. Um, unlike PPP, you do not go through a lender for an idle loan. Idle is applied directly through the SBA 
Uh, the deadline was just oh, about a week ago, extended all the way through December 31st of this year. So you have pretty much the rest of this year to apply for an adult loan if uh, you needed to. If an applicant is denied, uh, must wait up to six months to request reconsideration for an adult loan. And you'd need to be able to provide additional information to substantiate your application. For example, your tax returns, tax transcript releases, uh, identification verifications and whatnot. They can be contacted by calling their uh, disaster loan customer service center. Now, if you remember, Idle Advance previously uh, was a grant program offered together with Idle Program. The amount of the grant was determined by the number of employees indicated on the Idle application. So you received a thousand dollar employee up to a maximum of ten thousand dollars for as a grant. The Idle Advance uh, did not have to be paid repaid back, and recipients did not have to be approved for an Idle loan to receive the Idle Advance. This is, again is a little bit of a summary, so I won't get too much into the details of it as you see that at the very bottom, all funds for the idle advance have been allocated and is no longer available. Now, the only reason we touch on it is because there is a, a, a version of this, but this was just kind of an update uh, summary of what was previously offered. So now there's a targeted idle advance for small businesses. Part of the Economic Aid uh, Act appropriated $20 billion in another round of idle advance specifically targeted for grants to small businesses that meet the eligibility criteria. Eligibility is located in a low-income community. They suffered an economic loss greater than 30% and employees not more than 300 employees. They are $10,000 grants. Uh, if the entity previously received an annual advance, entities are eligible to receive the difference up to $10,000. So the key there is if you receive less than 10,000, you can request the difference. If you receive 10,000 before, you would not be eligible to receive another 10,000. Now to continue with this, the low income community definition uh, falls under a population census track. Generally, the poverty rate, uh, sorry, poverty rate is at least 20% for non-metro areas, a medium family that does not exceed 80% of the statewide medium family income or for a metro area where the fam medium family income does not exceed 80% of the greater of the statewide medium uh, family income or the metro area medium family income. There is a link uh, here and you can actually kind of search it as well to find out the different areas uh, where on, on a map and you can kind of see where they're located. There is not currently an application for the targeted idle advance. Um, uh, right now, currently, the SBA is first prioritizing idle advance applicants who previously received less than 10000 or applied and did not get an idle advance because the funds were exhausted. So they're following up on that first, and the SBA has not just uh, issued guidance for implementation of this program as of uh, 115, so today is of 125. So that was a brief recap of the idle and the new idle advanced uh, targeted. The last program I'll kind of touch on is the Shuttered Venue Operators Grants, SVOG. It is also administered by the SBA's Office of Disaster Assistance. Uh, it's targeting the following industries. So this one is very specific to the industry category. Live venue operators or promoters, theater, theatrical producers, live performing arts organization, museum operators, including zoos and aquariums who meet specific criteria motion picture theater operators or talent representative. Some of the eligibility here is fully operational as of uh, February 29th of 2020, last year, at least 25% reduction in gross revenue in 2019 versus 2019, I mean, I'm sorry, in 2020 versus 2019, is open or intends to reopen. So some of the questions I've received here, if it's a closed venue that is no longer opening, no, they would not be eligible. This is only, if they're open or if they're closed, but they are intending to reopen, then they can apply for this. Meet the fine physical and business characteristics depending on the type of entity it is. Must not have received a PPP loan on or after December 27, 2020. 
and applying for or receiving an idle loan does not affect as well. So basically, this is something that has come up where like it's one or the other. So it's either the PPP or the shuttered venue operator grants if you fall under this type of category. Because if you received, this, this is a grant. So this one does not have to be paid back. And the loan, the PPP loan, can be forgivable if you apply 60% to payroll. But if not, you do have to repay that. The SVOG, the Shutter Venue Operators Grants, um, does not, but again, you could not have received the PPP loan after December 27th of last year. So basically about a month ago, which I don't believe there were any being issued at that time as funds had already been um, completely exhausted. So if you're applying now, if you fall under one of these categories, you kind of really have to decide whether or not you want to go with this order of plan for a PPP. However, you can apply for an idle loan and it does not affect the status of the shuttered venues operator grant. Now the priorities and amounts, um, approximately $15 billion from the Economic, AIDS, uh, Economic Aid Act was appropriated for this. Two billion will be set aside for entities that employ no more than 50 full-time employees. So those almost micro businesses. Grants will be initially implemented into two priority category groups based on the initial 14 day period. So for eligible entities with not more than 10% of revenue in 2020 compared to 2019, or for eligible entities uh, with not more than 30% of revenue in 2020 compared to 2019. And the grants uh, will be the lesser of the calculations below or $10 million. So an entity in operation in, on January 1st of 2019, amount equal of 40 45% of gross revenue during 2019. And then entity in operations after um, January 1st, 2019 equal to the average monthly gross earned revenue for each full month during which the entity was in op operation multiplied by six. Now museums have a limitation of $10 million for all affiliated museums. So each and if it's uh, a museum chain, they can't apply separately for all the different ones. So the proceeds received on the grant under this section may be used for costs incurred during the period beginning March 1st when the pandemic first hit and ending on December 31st of this year. So it can be ongoing. Uh, any amounts received under a grant under this section are not expended uh, on or before the date that is the first year after the date of disbursement of the grant. And the eligible expenses, it could be used for payroll costs, rent obligations, utility payments, uh, payments of principal of interest, work protection expenditures, uh, payments to independent contractors and other ordinary necessary business expenses. Now, some of the ineligible entities, uh, prohibited exclusions are businesses that received a PPP loan after December 27th of last year, which I mentioned. They cannot be listed on the National Securities Exchange. They cannot be more than 10% of their 2019 gross revenue from federal funding. They cannot have received more than 10% of their 2019 gross from federal funding. They cannot own or operate a venue in more than one country of 10 states or 10 states, I should be 10 states. They cannot employ more than 500 full-time employees and cannot be associated with activities of a sexual nature. So these exclusions are limited, uh, are listed, I'm sorry, in the legislation and the further SBA guidance is pending. Uh, there's more information on the website. Now, that was a lot of information. <laughs> Here's my contact information. Uh, feel free uh, to either you more than welcome to go to the Chamber of Commerce uh, or, or, or reach out to myself directly. Um, as I stated, this is a, a federal program, but at the state we are trying to support as best we can to get this information out to everyone. It's a definitely challenging times that we're in, uh, but obviously I think working together will give us the best result um, moving forward. Uh, for these types of loans, specifically the PPP, your best bet is to connect with a lender um, for any kind of really succinct. I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions that I can, general questions and or put you in contact with someone in the SBA because uh, there is a local office 
uh, district office, I should say. Uh, but really, a, a lot of that, and most of the time, I find that that's going to be redirected back to the lender because there are some nuances between some of the lenders. Um, so it really kind of depends, and that's who you'll have to talk to because that's actually who you're signing uh, the agreements and the loans for the PPP is going to be with the lender. Now, I think I see, I do see a couple of questions here. A few questions. If you go to the Q and A, yes, I'm looking at what Kathleen and Claire, 25 percent reduction in gross receipts between. Okay, Mr. Lopez, let me. The first question is: um, Our company is applying for the second loan, and when calculating the requirement for a 25 percent reduction in our gross ro uh, receipts between any quarter in 2019 compared to the same quarter in 2020, we're coming up short of a, uh, coming up short of around 4,800. Is there any way we can qualify by coming up with an expense of $4,800? So, I mean, that's what would be your loan uh, amount, but I'm, I guess I'm not sure what they mean by coming up with an expense. That, that's the loss, correct? So that's the loss that, in your gross receipts, uh, the difference between 2019 and 2020. So that would be your what you, the the amount of your loan qualification. Here, here, Rana. Uh, uh, Mr. Alu, will you can you uh, maybe clarify your question for the uh, for the panelists? Please speak up, we cannot hear you. Adel? Yeah, I'm not sure if he's still there. And, and I, I think the same person had the same, uh, well, I had the top three questions of all employee-based costs and payroll costs I may mean, not be excluded from gross receipts. I'm not sure what he what he's trying to ask there. Yeah, so I need him to kind of clarify a little bit. And the third portion of his question, you heard at the SBA webinars, if they are planned for less than 150,000, then the requirement of that 25% does not have to be fulfilled. Um, I, the only thing I can think of that he's touching on there is for, um, but is that for the PPP? I'm wondering if he's asking or if he's asking for the IDO. Okay, what here, let me, um... Just a moment, let me. And Zubina, somebody actually did answer the question. I think if- Well, that, here is, we have one person online that may offer some, the person's a business bank, uh, broker with uh, Harris Bank. Uh, Ms. Uh, Zubina Khan, you, yes. you, had a, you made a comment. Could you share it with the audience? Yes, absolutely. Um, in order for, the only time you actually need to show a reduction of 25% in revenue or grow, total sales is if uh, you are asking for an amount higher than 150, 150,000. Anything less than 150,000 for your PPP amount does not require you to submit any kind of notification, uh, any kind of documentation showing that you had a decrease in 25% of sales or revenue. Thank you. You're welcome. Once again, uh, Manny, I, I think this question came up uh, last time under the first uh, uh, package about what relief, if any, are there for uh, real estate owners who are renting property? And in essence, whether it's commercial or residential. Yeah, unfortunately for that, there isn't anything right now that was included in this that I'm aware of. Uh, specifically now with the, in regards to the PPP, the IDO and the shuttered venues um, doc, um, there is speculation about uh, 
the current administration obviously passing uh, an additional stimulus package that would include uh, something uh, for that, but it, it's not covered in this particular instance. Thank you. No, of course. Sorry, I know. I wish I had something else to offer for well, that. Yeah, I know. Um, I think uh, those are, as I, I'm searching through the, uh, the, uh, the questions, those are the primary ones that people shared. Uh, there is a, a question just in, as a by way of information. Uh, we do intend to share this uh, session has been recorded. And uh, once it's uh, uploaded to the website, we can share that uh, with the audience. So um, if you would, I know some join without uh, registering. So if you would put your email uh, in the chat, so that can be our uh, mechanism that we would use to, to share the link uh, as well. Now, when uh, uh, Manny, one quick question. When we're uh, in the presentation, it was drawn a distinction that, I mean, that you could still draw, use the, the revenue uh, as a basis from 2019 uh, or 2020. Correct. Now, to the extent, let us just assume for purposes of discussion, you had a, a, a larger employee, uh, let's say base in 2019, then then now uh, 2020, uh, would you still be able to use the 2019 even though you may have less employees now? I, you know, that's a good question. I don't think that was, uh, that has kind of really been stipulated or kind of really drawn out, but I think uh, really what it was looking at more or less is kind of uh, general sales or revenue. Uh, so not really looking at cost, but more or less uh, your revenue that compared 2019, you know, 2020 to 2019, the loss to really determine uh, your loan amount. So I don't think that was something that was taken into consideration Hi, because really, regardless of whether your employees that very you know, good yourself. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, here, let me just search the chat now if I see if there's any other thing that I may have missed. Okay, we we'll have a question. Uh, once again, I guess this goes really in terms of the form of the entity. To the extent that we have a, a, a small chapter S corporation with uh, no employees, primarily the, you know, the incorporator, uh, and they have experienced a reduction uh, in revenue, significant reduction in income as a result of the, the pandemic, how uh, can and how does PPP help in this particular uh, scenario? So I don't see the question. So are they asking is a sole proprietor? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a sole proprietor. Yes, a small sole uh, sole proprietor corporation. Okay. In other words, it's there's no employees. It's just that person. Yeah. They elected to form as a subchapter S, and. Now, I mean, I, it doesn't. They haven't indicated whether they take a, a salary, how they how they've got themselves structured. But I'm assuming they would have some sort of salary. But anyway, how could they still take advantage of the PPP program? Well, more or less, that's going to be kind of a little bit, maybe almost one of those one-off questions where they kind of connect with that lender specifically. But really, what it, I mean, I think the same thing applies. Is they'll be looking at their overall still, you know, uh, for that particular, as a sole proprietor of their company, their organization, right? Uh, revenue compared, you know, 2020 revenue compared to 2019. That's how they would kind of come up still with that loan amount or, uh, for PPP. And it would have a lot to do with whether or not they pay themselves a payroll. If they do not, then um, that may not be an option, but that's a good question that I can kind of look and follow up to because if they don't pay themselves a salary, it might not be able, they, they might still be able to apply for a PPP, but they won't be forgivable. Because my understanding is that obviously for it to be forgivable, you must use it for 60% payroll tax uh, as a payroll um, benefit uh, to pay your payroll. And if you don't pay yourself and, and typically don't have that, uh, that might be something that, that's a one-off question, like I said, for maybe one of the lenders. 
What, uh, uh, Manny, what about a situation where uh, we're dealing with commission, people who are uh, commission employees? They, uh, I'm not, uh, whether they have, I'm not sure the questioner has a draw or not, but an example was like real estate agents who uh, have experienced a downturn in income because it hasn't been that same uh, activity in, in the real estate market. Uh, I think what? that's going to be very similarly. Again, uh, it draws back on kind of comparison, uh, you know, what their commissioner bonus they received in 2020 compared to 2019. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, um, I'm not sure if I'm on mute or not. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Zabina again. I just want to circle back to the first question, the question prior to this one regarding the sole prop in business. Um, if they are looking to apply for the PPP loan and this is their, they're the only employee, they can actually apply for it and submit their schedule, their K ones, or form 1065 to apply for it for 2019 and 2020, and they would qualify. Yeah, no, 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 that definitely qualify. Um, the portion that I wasn't sure, and I don't know if you know, was whether or not they, they could still apply for the uh, loan forgiveness. Forgiven. Yes, they will be able to apply for the forgiveness as well and get majority of it forgiven, depending on what the outcome is. But yes, they should, they can qualify and they do qualify to apply for the forgiveness as well. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Well, let, let me, can I ask as a follow-up question for individuals situated that way, what would the proceeds of the loan be used for? If we're talking about PPP and they're not, and their their schedule or 1065, or their, their K is just showing a certain amount of income, what, uh, what would be used as the basis or what would the proceeds be used for? They can actually use the proceeds for, um, uh, payroll as payroll if they're paying themselves they can use it for rent for the office space they can use it for utilities as well but it, they would still wouldn't they not be still required to meet that certain 60 percent cut off they have at least 60 percent has to be devoted to payroll at least 60 percent yes that is correct has to be devoted to payroll in order for them to be able to qualify for the forgiveness. Okay. And then, and, and Ms. Khan, uh, for the purpose of the audience, why don't you just introduce yourself, please? So we, we, know, <laughs> we, okay. are, we know who you are, okay? Perfect, thank you. My name is Zabina Khan. I am a business banker with BMO Harris Bank. I've been with the bank for, I would say about close to 10 years. And currently in my role, I am on the processing end for the SBA PPP loans. Um, if you guys do have any questions, you can always reach out to me via email or uh, phone, um, my cell phone. I can give you my contact information. My email is. Well, could Zabina. you put it in the chat? Would you put oh, it yeah, in the absolutely. chat? That'd be better. I'll do that. All right. And uh, let me just uh, 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 make this remark uh, once again. Uh, CIGC is providing this information. Uh, as information, we're not endorsing anyone. There's, uh, there are, uh, we're just uh, fortunate to have Ms. Khan join us this afternoon, and she is actually in the, in the, with a, a, a major bank in the area, and was uh, willing to share her her understanding and uh, information with us. Uh, but that by that self, we're not endorsing anybody. Don't so no one come back and say CLGC. You better go to BMO Harris. There are other banks. And also, there, there's legal questions that have been broached in the course of this, this seminar that is very important that you consult with an attorney or your accountant, particularly as it relates to some of the questions, if you actually qualify as a small business, how can things be arranged that uh, will keep you on the right side of the law, but maximize your ability to take advantage of, these, uh, of this, this uh, and very important relief uh, program. Yeah, and Ms. Khan, thank you so much for this information. Like I said, uh, you, you really should have been the one presenting then, but oh. I, I definitely appreciate, um, and, and I'm glad that I'm referring folks to speak to those particulars to their lenders. So thank you. 
Yes. No, thank you so much for letting me just jump right in. Um, I'm just here trying to provide some guidance to anyone that has questions. Oh, thank you, Ken. Thank you. All right. Well, I, I, that pretty much, uh, like I said, well, here, let me just take, I see some. Oh, uh, one question is, can, um, and I don't know, maybe this is varies by lender, but let, I, Manny, I'll start with you, but to the extent that we have individuals, uh, though they have a uh, sub, contract or contract out uh, work that they do in the course of their business uh, through it, you, you providing 1099s. Could this be used to calculate the, the payroll cost or, or is that going to be considered the outside of the eligible expenses? No, it would actually definitely be considered uh, for the application, they would have to supply us when they're applying a 2019 and 2020 1099, and that should be sufficient. Okay, uh, Manny, you have any insight on that too? No, that, that that's correct. Uh, basically, I was going to say that they're, they are uh, they are eligible to use those uh, as kind of payroll expenses. Another question is. Is it too late to apply for forgiveness from the round one of the PP, uh, uh, the payroll protection program at this point? If no, they haven't done it. No, actually, uh, the portal to apply for forgiveness is only open for individuals that received over 150,000 in PPP funds. Anyone that received less than that, the portal has not been open uh, for you to apply for forgiveness yet. So for so those you, where they that apply for greater than uh, 150, is uh, what is the deadline? If there is, what it would be the deadline for them? Isn't it? Or how is it calculated? Days? How do we calculate the deadline for applying? I believe it's one year from the maturity date of the loan. Yes. Okay. So, the, when, and the maturity date would be when again? When it was distributed, whenever they received it. Okay. In other words, one year from the day that they the, the received. The date the loan was executed between them and the bank, right. and they got mm -hmm. the money. Correct. Okay. All right. Um. Once again, is it? I I, I saw that it, the in the in your presentation it said between eight and twenty four weeks. Is this once again that the the besides the dollar uh, a limit of a two million, is it still some formula that's calculated uh, like two and a half times your monthly uh, expenses? Or yes, not it's, income, um, correct. No, it would be two and a half times your average monthly payroll for all businesses with an exception of restaurants. They are getting at about 3.5% of their average uh, payroll amount. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've exhausted the questions. I'm sure there are more as, as, as once people have a time to reflect uh, um, you that uh, can uh, take advantage of the information uh, uh, accessing Mr. Lopez. Uh, he shared that his contact information. Um, there, there, the one option you have uh, if you want to reach out to BMO Harris Bank, uh, uh, the uh, Ms. Khan left her name and uh, uh, email. That's Zubina, Z-U-B-E-E-N-A dot con, K-H-A-N, at B-M-O dot com, B-M-O dot com. And once again, like I said, this is, uh, uh, we've been able to take advantage of her insight. But once again, uh, like I said, is you we would ask you to, to explore your options. We don't want, we're not in a position to recommend uh, that our, our role is here is to share information with you our communities to best help you address the challenges presented to us all by the COVID-19. Um, Manny, let me turn the, the platform over to you one last time for your, you know, let's say, closing comments for us, please. 
Uh, sure, no worries. Brother so, Mitchell, they, uh, one of the questioner, Taranum Adel, uh, put up a question that she was having technical difficulty. She can explain the questions that she had. Oh, okay. Uh, let her. Here, why, why don't we, can, uh, can you, is she unmuted, uh, Maksud? I'm, I, I know let I me see. Let me check. Yeah, and in the meantime, I really didn't have any other closing comments other than to say, uh, we're definitely here to support it any which way that we can. Uh, if we, you know, if I, I can't answer your question, obviously it sounds like Ms. Ken, she has a great, uh, Ms. Khan has great insight um, as I refer to a lot of these um, back to the lender. So that it is great that is going to be where specifically for the PPP loans. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of different resources uh, available as well. And we'll make sure that if we can't get you an answer that we will find one for you if we don't know it. Uh, so. I don't know, you can unmute yourself to ask the question, please. Wow. Not hearing any, anyone asking, right? Yeah, that there's uh, this, uh, Taranum Adil, she wants to ask a question, but she needs to unmute herself. She wrote in the comments here. She was having some technical difficulty, but she's ready to ask the question. There, I just asked her to unmute. Go ahead. Okay. Well, if she's not able to, um, we definitely can kind of. Well, yeah. I, uh, if, follow up. I, oh, well, let me try one last time, Mandy, please. Thank you. All right. Okay. I, okay. Well, I mean, it. Uh, I guess we, what we ask you is to um, follow up directly with uh, Mr. Lopez. He, he's given you his uh, contact information and is willing to share uh, his insights with you uh, relative to your questioning. Um, once again, this, uh, the objective of this afternoon is to help best prepare you, our community, to prepare to take advantage of those relief efforts offered uh, by our government. And um, <clears throat> we thank you for joining us this afternoon. As I stated earlier, uh, we will have a, the video presentation uh, this, the, of uh, the video recording of this presentation this afternoon. Uh, placed up on our YouTube channel. If you place your email address in the chat, we will use that to share the link with you. Um, and uh, on behalf of uh, the, Mr. Lopez, the state of Illinois and the uh, CIOGC, we uh, thank you for your spending your time with us this afternoon. And, and inshallah that you will find this information helpful and we would, uh, uh, if you have any further questions, please share with us so we can find other ways that we can effectively help you uh, through the challenges of this. Brother, brother, brother Mitchell, this is Shafiq, just one second. Um, yeah, so uh, those who are, Assalamu alaikum, my name is Shafiq Abu Bakr, and I'm the president of Illinois Muslim Chamber of Commerce. Um, and uh, we are happy to partner with COGC and, uh, uh, and the state government to provide this this session today. If any of you who are not in the Chamber of Commerce, Illinois Muslim Chamber of Commerce uh, group, uh, please uh, email uh, your details to info at ilmchamber.org. Uh, I will type it info at ilmchamber.org and you will be added to the group so that you can get to know about our future events. Thank you. Um, back to you, Brother Mitchell. Okay. Uh, though, well, those are the, the, the closing comments. And once again, we thank you for joining us this, this afternoon. And inshallah, as I said, stay tuned. We'll, we, uh, we'll look for your suggestions on other ways that we can uh, best share this information. And your questions will uh, help guide us and bring a program that will be meaningful to you, our community. Assalamu alaikum. Manny, good afternoon and thank you, thank you so much for your time and effort. 
as well as to Shafiq and the Illinois Muslim Chamber of Commerce. Salam yeah. alaikum. My Bye -bye. pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Stay healthy and safe. Thank you. Take care.